Key for three. Oh! Taylor. Taylor's going to finish it. Watford for the win. Yes. Yes. I was really fired up to do this episode. Like. Oh, I was so hyped. I thought I was finally going to get to talk about something positive. Finally going to get to talk about something good. And then, you know, reality set in and the fucking losers were the fucking losers. What's going on, world? Michael Beasy here coming to you from the Sports Corner. We're back. It's been a week off. Nothing much has really changed. Sports has been kind of dimming down a little bit because the Super Bowl extravaganza. I just got a message. Who, who's messaging me right now? Who, who is that? Oh, Easter. Easter, Jacob Easter. I've been talking to Jacob Easter a little bit. So my buddy Easter, he is a part of paintball and shit like that. So I'm thinking about doing a documentary on his paintball crew and what they all do. It's very interesting, actually. Toxic Teddies is the name of it. I'm thinking about dabbling in that project since sports is starting to get really fucking dull to me. Just kidding, y'all. Just kidding. That's how I make my living with this show. <laughs> but before I jump into the episode, let me remind you all to please like, subscribe, share, comment. Again, like, subscribe, share, comment. Thank you. My name is Michael Beasy again. I know if you're watching this show, you already know that, but this could be your first time. And if this is your first time, you must understand that I'm a emotional hooser. Yes, I am. But let's jump into the episode. Count the third, watch the ESPN. Yes, game time. Shot like Curry. I just hit two out two with the same name. What's going on, y'all? So, welcome to Breaking News. Let's jump into some breaking news stories. Breaking news story number one. Jawan Howard and Greg Gard getting a little tussle. Oh, Michigan and Whiskey got in a tussle. Oh, my goodness. Let's see. So, Jawan Howard and Greg Gard were in the handshake line. Trust, mind y'all, this ain't the players. These are the coaches. And they had a little war of words, and then this happened, and this happened, and Jawan wanted to grab his hand over and smack this dude in the face. And you can't do that. It's just not allowed. You can't do that shit in basketball. There's an unwritten rule that if you do that as a coach, it's not best for business. You're going to be suspended. And Juwan Howard was suspended for the regular season. He's suspended for the last five games of the season. He will return for the Big Ten tournament. What a suspension. <laughs> Great suspension there, guys. You really showed him. This is his second instance. Uh, he did this last year at Maryland as well. He claims he's from the south side. He doesn't claim. He says he's from the south side of Chicago. And that means if you want to get it, you can get it. Whatever that means. I think we all know what that means. But other than that, I mean, that's good news for the Hoosiers in that sense. I mean, Michigan might lose some games and we'll pass them in the Big Ten. I mean, then again, we have to win some games. I'll get more to that later. News story number two. News story number two. The All-Star Game weekend happened this past weekend. Tyrese Halliburton. Your very own Pacer won the Rising Star Challenge. Carl Anthony Towns won the three-point shootout. Surprise, surprise there. I was not expecting it. Um, there were some pretty good shooters in that as well, but Steph wasn't in it. Clay wasn't in it. So how can you really say it's a three-point shootout if Steph and Clay aren't in it? And a center wins it. I mean, come on, man. You really think Carl would have beat Steph or Clay? The same. And then you had the clank contest. I mean, the dump contest. I'm not even going to tell y'all who won that because we all fucking lost. Nobody won the dump contest. The fans lost. The judges lost. The fucking uh, the participants lost. The friends of the participants lost. The fucking families of the participants lost. Everybody fucking lost. Even everybody all the way down to the fucking usher in the building lost. 
We lost watching that dunk contest. We lost literally an hour of our lives. That shit was almost as bad as watching Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> Other than that, though, the All-Star Game did happen. The All-Star Game happened. Team LeBron won, of course. Steph Curry set the All-Star Game record with 16 three-pointers, winning the Kobe Bryant MVP award. Pretty dope. Uh, the All-Star Game, I, I have some couple thoughts on it in general. One, the first half I was really bored. I, I got really bored watching it. You know, it's just watching a, a pickup game of run up and down, stat pack. And that's all they do is stat pack. And it, it really didn't get exciting until the third quarter when Steph went on his little three-point barrage like wow like the, the, if y'all remember nba jam growing up he's on fire steph curry was literally on fire i mean but that also contributes to the fact that nobody put their hand up in front of his face nobody was really guarding him it was fucking literally like 20 percent defense 90 percent or 80 percent offense um i know get my math right right that was steiner math um and also in regards to just that in general um, LeBron James hit the game-winning shot there in Cleveland. It was in Cleveland. MGK was there because he's from Cleveland, and he gave this little speech before the game, and I just felt so awkward for him. Like, why are you up here? Like, we get it. You're a rapper, rock, star, not a rapper. <laughs> Colson, you're not a rapper. We all discovered this with Eminem. But, um, yeah, so... I didn't understand why MGK was there. I, I still don't. The halftime show uh, consists of DJ Cali, Migos, Lil Wayne, Mary J. Blige. Fuck, there's uh, Ludacris. There, there's many, many uh, rappers. We just couldn't hear them. The audio was fucking horrendous. I, I've never heard something so horrible. Like The last time I heard something that horrible was when Fergie sang the national anthem and we could understand what she was saying. And this time, we were literally listening to fucked up music. Like, they could not... It, it was bad. I don't know if anybody else watched the NBA All-Star uh, All Star um, halftime show with DJ Cali, but it was fucking horrendous. And he also said, We'll never be... They said we'd never be here. Who said that? <laughs> DJ Khaled just be making shit up sometimes, I swear. <laughs> and breaking news story number three. The Undertaker, the Phenom, the man himself is a part of the WWE Hall of Fame 2022. <laughs> Round of applause. Everybody knows The Undertaker. Even if you don't watch professional, professional wrestling, you know The Phenom. You know The Undertaker. He has scared you at some point in your life. When you were a kid, you saw The Undertaker, you said... Okay, my dad, my, is he real? <laughs> it's fake, sir. It's fucking fake. It's wrestling. That goddamn wrestling. Turn that shit off. <laughs> my parents didn't say that to me. <laughs> but there's a, there's parents that say that to their kids. Don't watch that shit. Uh, don't say that to your kids. Professional wrestling is a shit. But The Undertaker had a fucking, I mean, it's a, it's a legendary career. There's nobody like him. There will never be. Anybody like The Undertaker? Nobody like him. He's put on some of the most phenomenal matches. His character has developed decades. I mean, the man did 30 years. People don't even live 30 years. He did professional wrestling for 30 years. And he was relevant. <laughs> relevant. 21-1 and one at WrestleMania. I mean, he, I think the final record was 24-2. The 21-1 and one was when the streak was officially broken by... Lesnar, Roman would eventually beat him as well. And then he would do this little path of doing these, doing matches he shouldn't be doing at his age, you know. And he finally ended things with AJ in a, a televised, it was, it was filmed um, match. And you guys should watch it. If you never watched it, go watch Undertaker versus AJ Styles WrestleMania. It's like a, a movie style match. It's really fucking dope. And if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It'll give you that. It, it'll just make you. It'll give you that childhood nostalgia that you you get of the Undertaker. Just just his presence, who he is as a as a wrestler, what he put into his craft. You, all you can do is respect it and have nothing but love for it for real. Next up, halftime.
For the next two games, the scene shifted to Indiana. On their home court, the Pacers would win game three behind their tireless guard, Reggie Miller. Eight pass ahead for Mark Jackson. This is what Indiana wants. They run to Miller for three. Got it. In game four, the Bulls led by a point in the final seconds when Miller and Jordan would square off again. Here we go. McGee holding, looking. Here comes Miller to the top. Miller a catch. Miller a look. He hit it. Reggie Miller knocked it down. Four tenths of a second left. Tony out near the timeline. Looking, 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 looking. He got it to Michael. the board and spun out and Indiana wins the game. So I'll never forget that shit. So when Reggie hit that game winner on Michael Jordan, I was in my grandma's living room with my dad and he knocked me the hell out. You know when they go, whoa, like when, when a big shot gets hit. <laughs> I was right around there and I got cracked. I said, like, boom. That's what it got. I knocked the fuck out. I remember going like, Yes! yes. <laughs> it was a total accident. He didn't even realize he did it. But it happened. Knocked me the fuck out. Never forget it. Never forget. But remember this, though. I, I got this newspaper from when Reggie retired. Unforgettable. This was published Wednesday, May 25th, 2005. The day after they got their asses beat by the Pistons. And they got 31 reasons in here, right? And I'm just going to name off a couple of reasons on why we will miss Reggie Miller. Number one, two words. Boom, baby! 14, his loyalty. Everybody else chases a championship late in their career. He stuck around. He was determined to finish as a pacer, just as John Stockton was insistent on finish, finishing his career as a member of the Jazz. Number 20, those flops. He was the king. He had more flops than Kevin Costner. <laughs> hey, don't hate on Kevin Costner, Kravitz. He was the Lawrence Oliver of flopping. He made a Vlade Divac look like a hopeless picker. And then number 31, all of the above and so much more. It's so, su such a shame he didn't go with number 62. Number 28. His essential Hoosierness. He came here from Southern Cal, but after so many years, he's much a Hoosier as Larry Bird and John Mellicamp. <laughs> oh, they got named the two fucking Marcus White dudes. Say Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight was a true Hoosier. I, I guarantee you this. If you ask the state of Indiana who is the most beloved sports figure in its history, you're gonna you're gonna hear Bobby Knight, number one, Reggie Miller, Peyton Manning. It's gonna be up there. Probably Peyton Manning before Reggie, but Reggie has a special place in the heart of Indiana. Always has, always will. The motherfucker deserves a statue outside Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Point blank, period. And next up, weekly updates. Weekly update. Welcome to Weekly Updates. So like I was saying earlier, the fucking Hoosiers lost to Ohio State tonight, 80-69. to They sucked. Coaching was horrendous down the stretch. It was bad. It was really, really bad. IU was up four with a minute six to go in the game and lost. In overtime, as you can see, these motherfuckers got outscored in overtime. Something stupid. 17-6. to six. As soon as the game went to overtime, I knew it was over. IU has a hard time of recovering when something bad happens. You know, when your team isn't resilient and can't respond to pressure, it's bad. You're not going to win games. In the tournament, you have to respond to pressure to win games. You have to be resilient. Shots are going to be made. You have to respond. You have to make stops. 
You have to get rebounds. You have to make free throws. Let me say that one more time. You have to make free throws. It's as simple as that. Literally. IU free throw shooting this year, abysmal. The last five years, abysmal, atrocious. Like, what the fuck are y'all doing? Y'all have full access to Assembly Hall. How the fuck y'all have full access to Assembly Hall and y'all can't make a fucking free throw? Y'all can't make a three-pointer. Y'all can't make a fucking jump shot. How? Why? How is it even possible? Like, do you motherfuckers just go back to the crib and get on them white girls? To get on it? <laughs> I'm just saying, what is it? What are y'all doing down there in Bloomington? Like, for real, for real. I mean, I see pictures at the bar and shit uh, of, uh, on Twitter, and the bars be dead. Like, what are y'all doing? Are y'all throwing the parties at your crib? Get off the weed, man. Get off the weed, man. I can smoke it, but y'all can't. Figure it the fuck out. Y'all are fucking sitting there at 16 and fucking 10. Five losses in a row. Five losses in a row. The wheels have fallen the fuck off. Good thing is, we got some fucking bums coming up. Yeah, we got some bums. We're home Thursday to Maryland. We should wax that ass. We got fucking Minnesota on Saturday. We should wax that ass. And then we got fucking... Well, who's next? Who, who's after fucking Minnesota? But probably fucking Rutgers. And then we got Purdue. And we're going to get our asses beat by Purdue. And then we'll go to the Big Ten tournament and see what the fuck happens. And the goddamn luck in the Big Ten tournament to the Hoosiers? Lost. Lost, lost, lost. Oh, you ain't won a fucking game in the Big Ten tournament? I don't know how long. They'll go play some fucking bum-ass Nebraska and lose at the buzzer or something. Because some motherfucker that they never played in his life will hit fucking 10 three-pointers and beat us. That's just what happens. The Hoosiers, we got bad luck. We need to figure it out. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm pissed. The bubble, we're on the bubble and it's about to fucking burst. We can't afford many losses. Don't, you know how many losses we can get in with the tournament with? 12. 12 losses. Maybe 13, but 12 is it. We got to get to at least 20 wins. And it's going to be hard to get to 20 at this point. We, we got to win at least three of these last four and win a game in the Big Ten tournament and we might be out. But if we can't do that, we are fucked. And I'm going to be pissed and I'm going to lose my shit because three weeks ago, I was at the top of the mountain and fucking today, I'm all the way down here at the bottom. All right, so the Colts, not much has happened with them really other than that Gus Bradley hiring. Uh, Jim Irsay's out on the golf course. He's giving us a little update on the fact that he's going for gold, y'all. So we're going to see what happens. I mean, he's golfing. He's showing us that he's going to get that hole-in-one. So hopefully he hits a hole-in-one with this quarterback situation. Figure it the fuck out, Jim. You got two weeks. The clock is ticking. And the Pacers. So basically the Pacers, Tyrese Halliburton, he's a stud. I got to say, I was hating on the trade at first. But, I mean, the man's came in here. He's done his thing. Him and Duarte are a nice tandem together. And also... Kanye's got our support as well. The Pacers will get the number one pick. We're speaking it into existence right now. Pacers get the number one pick, and we're back in the playoffs next year. Let's fucking do it. Bring Jaden Ivey on them. All, all, ah, bring Jaden. I, I, you know what? That's why I just got tongue tied. I about said a Purdue guy needs to come to the Pacers. No, I don't want him. I, we need, we need. I need to do some more research. <laughs> no, Jaden Ivey. He's really good though. He's he's really good. He do the pace. He, He'd be really good on the Pacers. All right, I might have to swallow my pride this one time. Pacers need to get it, Jay Uh, Even if they don't get the number one pick, he might be available at number two or three. He, he's a bad dude, though. Bad man. Thank y'all for watching the episode. I'm sorry if it seemed short. There wasn't really a lot of sports that went on, and it's starting to die down a little bit. But the NBA season, we got the playoffs. or But the NBA season, we got the last stretch of 28 games to go. Um... I can say this, Dragic got traded to, or didn't get traded, he got picked up by the Nets today. That'll be an interesting pickup for the Nets. They needed some point. Just with Kyrie Irving in the playoffs, but won't be able to play in these vaccination states. These non-vaccinated, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean. You know what? I also got to say this. What's up with the fact that schools are going maskless now, but yet yeah, my job has us wearing a mask? Fucking... 
I don't get it. Anyways, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment. Again, like, subscribe, share, comment. And before I get out of here, you know I love to end things with a quote. Keep your head up. Tupac. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Go Hoosiers.